Ah, Saturn. Incredible with its majestic rings and swirling clouds. But what would it be like to dive into it? NASA's Cassini tried that, and it turned out to be a wild trip. NASA's Cassini spacecraft was a probe that spent 13 years orbiting Saturn and gathering some incredible data. One of its major goals was to help us understand how come Saturn's atmosphere is so hot. The upper atmospheres of planets are always heated, duh, <laughs> they're directly under the sun. The strange thing about Saturn is that gas giants are too far from the sun to get that kind of warmth. So Cassini didn't just observe the planet from outside. On September 15, 2017, it dove deep to the journey that would become the spacecraft's grand finale. Its last moments were spent inside Saturn's upper atmosphere, sending back priceless data as it slowly disintegrated. Now these upper layers are no joke. The planet's horrifying magnetic field hums with energy, and powerful winds whip around at thousands of miles per hour. Cassini would pass through thick layers of clouds, hazy, pale gold and muted, reflecting the sun's faint light. And these aren't cute, fluffy Earth-like clouds made of water vapor. This is a nightmare cocktail of hydrogen and helium. The probe ventured deeper, passing through the region where Saturn's iconic rings rain material onto the planet. Cassini discovered that this rain was more intense than anyone expected – more than 22,000 pounds of material per second. That's at a rate that Saturn's rings might not last forever. The planet's own gravity could eat them away completely someday, unless the rings get a sudden update. These are all tiny grains of ice and dust, caught in the planet's gravity, falling into the atmosphere like a relentless storm. The grains, mixed with water, methane, and even chemicals like propane and butane, slowly alter Saturn's atmospheric chemistry. It mixes with the particles in the planet's upper atmosphere, making them heavier and warming Saturn up. Unfortunately, this was too much for poor little Cassini. It was designed to be tough enough for the outer layers, but it burned up before it could descend into the terrifying deeper regions. In the more intense layers of Saturn's atmosphere, winds reach extreme speeds of over 1,100 miles per hour. The pressure becomes crushing, and the deeper you go, the more overwhelming it becomes. It would feel like entering an ocean of gas, one with no clear surface, where the sky gets darker, thicker, and more hostile as you descend. And at a certain point, complete darkness. Just you and the overwhelming mass of hydrogen gas pressing in from all sides. But Cassini's sacrifice was invaluable to scientists. The key data it sent us before the grand finale allowed scientists to map Saturn's upper atmosphere more completely than ever before. Cassini tracked bright stars, like those in Orion and Canis Major, as they passed behind the planet, measuring how their starlight shifted. This helped scientists to understand how dense and hot the atmosphere was. It left us some final pictures as well, though they're not as impressive as you might think. It was a monochrome shot taken from about 394,000 miles away, showing a dark portion of Saturn's night side softly illuminated by the reflection of its own rings. NASA also posted a picture made by their own artists of what Cassini could have seen in its last moments. And of course, it gave us the answer to the big mystery of Saturn's heat. It's because of auroras. It turns out that due to the crazy magnetic field, the planet's cloud layers are sparked up by sudden bursts of auroras at the poles. They're like the northern lights on Earth, but far more intense. The gas giant skies occasionally light up with radiant greens and blues. They're sparked by the interaction between solar winds and the charged particles from Saturn's moons. The hottest areas of Saturn were near these auroras. These light shows are powerful enough to heat the upper atmosphere, spreading warmth across the planet. Thanks to this added information, we discovered something important, not just about Saturn, but about all gas giants across our solar system and beyond. Meanwhile, the photos we have of Venus are much more dramatic. Venus is a bit closer to the Sun than Earth. It's often been called Earth's twin because of the similarities, like in size, mass, and composition. But don't be fooled. Beneath those thick clouds lies one of the most toxic environments in our solar system. Its surface is a nightmare, where temperatures soar to about 900 degrees Fahrenheit, 
hot enough to melt lead. The pressure on the planet is crushing as well, 92 times that of Earth's. That's like standing 3,000 feet under the ocean. We just couldn't resist taking some pictures. So in the 1970s, scientists managed to land probes on this volcanic, unforgiving surface. And these missions were successful. They managed to send back the first photos of Venus and showed us incredible stuff. The first probe lasted only 23 minutes on the surface and then crushed down under this crazy pressure, winds, and heat. Both first and second probes captured black and white panoramas of a rocky hillside. On both, the second lens failed to eject. The horizon was flat, the ground strewn with jagged rocks, and the oppressive atmosphere pressed down like an invisible force. After lots of hurdles, we finally managed to look at colorful pictures from Venus in the 1980s. This spacecraft lasted more than two hours after extreme conditions. It's incredible that they managed to send us anything at all. Venus is a planet where metals melt and where the atmosphere itself eats away the spacecraft. The photos it took showed that on Venus, the skies aren't blue, but an eerie yellow due to the thick clouds of sulfuric acid. NASA also has some computer simulations of what Venus's surface could look like. But these don't really convey the horror of actually being there. Perhaps it's time we look at Venus once more. There's so much we don't know about this fiery neighbor. Finally, we also tried to enter Jupiter's atmosphere in the 90s. And that's the hardest one on the list. NASA's Galileo missions probe was designed to dive into Jupiter. It was launched in 1989 and traveled millions of miles with a small entry probe on board. This tiny hero would face one of the most intense environments we've ever encountered in space. It was finally released on July 13, 1995. At that moment, the spacecraft was still 50 million miles away from Jupiter. So just to enter the atmosphere, it had to fall for months. And it finally did fall on December 7th, plunging headfirst into Jupiter's thick, swirling atmosphere. The probe slammed into Jupiter's skies at a staggering 106,000 miles per hour. That's fast enough to cross the United States from Los Angeles to New York in 90 seconds. The intense deceleration caused the probe to experience a horrifying gravity. 228 times stronger than the Earth's, it slowed down from supersonic speeds to just 100 miles per hour in minutes. The heat generated by its entry was so extreme that the shock wave ahead of it glowed as brightly as the sun itself. The temperature soared to 28,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, all this time, somehow, the probe was collecting data every second and sending it all to us. It gave us some critical information about Jupiter's mysterious atmosphere. For example, it turned out that Jupiter's upper atmosphere was drier than expected. Less water vapor and fewer organic compounds than scientists thought. The probe also measured fierce winds of up to a half a mile per second. And surprisingly, it didn't see that much lightning, even though we thought these are never ending on Jupiter. One of the probe's biggest surprises was the discovery that Jupiter's atmosphere contained less helium than we thought. It also revealed a horrifying radiation belt about 30,000 miles above Jupiter's clouds. It's like intense radiation encircles the planet like a cosmic shield. The poor little guy managed to survive for 58 minutes. It eventually succumbed to immense pressure. Meanwhile, the Galileo orbiter continued its mission, becoming the first spacecraft to orbit Jupiter. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.